Good morning. So I decided to change clothes because let me let me explain, okay? Let me explain myself. So normally when I'm home alone, I'm most likely in my PJs, which I do think is quite normal. But um, for the sake of this video and because I am kind of putting myself out there for millions of people to see if any, I thought it might be more appropriate if I wear proper clothes rather than my fluffy and comfortable PJs. Hi young friends and welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know, my name is Judy. I'm currently a second year dental student studying at the University of Heidelberg in Germany. So how do I manage to study dentistry in a completely different language? That is a very good question. The reason why I'm actually making this video is because a few days ago, some of my friends and I were talking about studying and uni and all of that shabam. And I was saying how, you know, there's so many times where I don't quite understand exactly what the professor is trying to say. And I think not only is it because I might like the technical jargon understanding, but also because of the language barrier. And if you're a person who is studying a subject in a different language or has had experience living in a foreign country where everybody speaks a different language from your mother tongue, then you will probably understand what I mean. It's just there are some times where it's just normal German words that I don't understand and it's those moments that kind of get to me. Start big and then go small. So what I mean with this is that when you're studying dentistry history or any subject that's very, very content heavy, I like to kind of start very general. So let's say the auditory system, because that was my last uh, most recent lecture. Instead of kind of diving straight into the deep end and going into the details, which oftentimes the professors kind of do at our uni, which is mentally overwhelming at times. What I like to do is I like to start very, very general. So rather than going straight to our lectures and going straight to lecture folian, sorry, my English is failing me right now, the lecture slides, yeah. I go to slides that the students above us have made for us as kind of like a general overview of the subject, or also websites, and I kind of look at the subject from a bigger scope. I start with the very basics, and then after I take the time to understand the general idea of the concept, so the general idea of the auditory system, for example, you know, starting with the anatomy and the physiology, then I dive deeper into the details. So it's kind of like you're putting layers into your studying. And then once you have the basic understanding of whatever it is that you're studying, what I would then go into is to test my knowledge. And this can come in all sorts of forms. And this is where I kind of emphasize the importance of being flexible with your learning in terms of your resources as well as how you learn. So for example, how I like to test my knowledge is to draw. And I don't mean being all like artsy fancy, but I have like this digital whiteboard on my laptop and I would kind of bring that up and just write down words, brainstorm them and start with like a keyword and then kind of branch out or draw diagrams, draw processes, stuff like that. Because I think by writing stuff down, by drawing it, I can physically see which kind of information I'm lacking, what I'm kind of struggling to explain or where I can't find the links between different areas. And so... That's one way. Another kind of way I like to test myself is to answer questions, whether that be from books or questions that our professors have given us, or perhaps questions from Amboss. Amboss is basically like a medical website platform that's so, so helpful. I use it quite often because it has lots of uh, past paper questions. And sometimes I do use Anki cards, but not very often because I remember in the second semester of uni, I relied very, very heavily on Anki cards because I thought I was kind of in that phase where I was like, yeah, let's do Anki cards, make as many as we can, go through as many as we can a day. For those of you who don't know, you can search it up. It's um, it's basically a digital flashcard system that's very efficient in learning quite actively in a certain period of time. But I realized Anki wasn't very good for me personally because I just spent so much time making the cards themselves rather than going through the cards and I felt like I was memorizing answers rather than actually understanding and being able to explain the answers differently each time. I didn't really like that feeling because overall I don't want to learn something for an exam. I want to learn it for my future patients. I want to learn it for myself because I generally do find interest in the stuff I'm studying. 
Sometimes it's kind of like, do I really have to know this for dentistry? Um, like, do I really have to know the kidney? And then some people may ask, oh, you know, where, how do you structure your studying? You know, do you have certain days where you go over certain topics or how does that work? I don't have a strict schedule where on this day I have to study, you know, physiology. On this day I have to go over biochemistry part two. Don't be too strict on scheduling every single thing in terms of studying because I've been through a phase where I literally scheduled my entire week by the hour of what I'm going to do, not only just studying, but like when I'm going to eat food, when I'm going to take a dump. Sometimes you may feel like you already know a topic very well and rather than spending that time and that allocated hour studying the subject that you're already quite confident in, I would rather spend that hour going over a subject I kind of struggle to understand. But that isn't to say that I'm completely against planning in general, but what I'm trying to say is don't be too strict in terms of, you know, what it is that you have to study on certain days. Be honest to yourself because you yourself, you, deep down inside, you know which subjects that you find difficult. Yeah, that's basically it. So um, my tips here is to start big, so start general and then go into the details, add layers to your studying after understanding the basics and be flexible with how you study. Don't try to always stick to one studying technique for every single subject that you have. Just with anything in life, try to be open-minded and the importance here is also to be consistent. So whatever it is you're doing and you feel like it's working for you, be consistent with it, but also try to be open because there's no one size fits all for studying and for anything in life. And in terms of language barrier, the only tip I can give to you is to really practice speaking the language, listen to the language a lot, ask questions if you have any and ask help from your peers as well, because I, I struggle to do this myself. I don't really like asking for help, but it's something I'm working on and it's something I've mentioned in the previous video as well. But yeah, your peers, your mates are with you. So if you have questions, ask them and ask your native friends for help, you know, especially if it's the language that's really bothering you. So for example, whenever I struggle to understand or whenever I'm struggling to formulate my sentences, especially when the day is really long, I'm super exhausted. I kind of mix my languages. So I speak Denglish, which is Deutsch with English, so German and English together. So I say a sentence mainly in German, a few words here and there in English, and hopefully that uh, can be of some help for you in your studying. person in your um what's the word your, 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 your no like but in your official language like in your mother mother tongue so, like even if you're the smartest person obviously a different language brings its own challenges so you kind of have to be mentally prepared and know that it's not going to be the same and obviously you might have to put in a little more effort but you guys also have that moment where you feel like you know you're kind of stuck in time 